you very much. Thank you, Ralph. Hi, everyone. So I will be not talking about like this test habitats, but we are still in space, obviously. And I have only six minutes, so I better just start from the very beginning. And in the beginning, there was light. Um, and Earth was formed. It was just in the right place. It was not too far. Uh, it was not too hot, not too cold. Just a perfect spot with enough energy for life to happen. Um, and with enough energy for this life to evolve. And then we evolved eventually. <laughs> we pondered for a bit and we figured out that we can burn fossil fuels to, as an additional energy source, and that propelled our civilization very forward, quickly, greatly, good call, almost. Because we got so good at burning those fuels, we started to heating up our planet. We are overproducing everything, so yeah, there is a lot of pollution. And it's all because, ever since Industrial Revolution, we are living in linear um, economy, when it's considered cheaper to buy a new product than to repair it or recycle it. It was born in misconception that we have infinite resources, and that's sadly not true. Now we are here, very sad photo from the last year, I think, and I just need to tell you that we need to change our way of living. But I know that none of us will suddenly ha uh, become hermits, and we still need to feed ourselves, to develop our society. So how to do that? Tough question. My short answer, let's go to Mars. Let's colonize it. And it could help us greatly, and I will show you how. This is Twardowski, a colony, a proposal of, of, col uh, of a colony for 1,000 inhabitants made by me and my colleagues from Wrocław University of Science and Technology uh, for some student design competition. We are very proud of it. We had not only the task to propose the structure and technical details, but also we had to make sure it's self-sustainable, that it can provide for itself and still develop itself further. And as you can see, it's quite ambitious, spacious, um, and it needs to produce all of its atmosphere, water, food. Somewhere oh, on the left, you can see vertical farming. So it's basically hydroponics, aeroponics. So you can mm, basically grow plants without soil, only using water and light. You can stack your uh, production. It uses 80% less water, and it's a part of our life support system. Uh, exactly, environmental control and life support systems. So it, pro it provides our colony with atmosphere, water, uh, and food. And it's designed to be a closed loop, a closed cycle, because uh, we need maximum efficiency. And we need to save our resources for better wars. And we, it does not stop there because we're not only producing our food and, and, and oxygen, we need to produce all other stuff, our clothes, our tools, our robots. And at the very top, you see six biomes where people live and all other things. It's a sprawling factory that can produce everything. And it also cannot be wasteful. It cannot produce everything in this uh, liner manner. Once again, we need a closed loop. So. It means that we need to be efficient with our resources. So that means recycle, reusing, and repairing everything we have. And this is where this most important, crucial resource once again appear, energy. Everything needs power. Our life support system, our production lines, and you need, to, and you need both up and running if you want this colony to survive. And this is when embodied energy, this term, becomes very important. Embodied energy is the sum of all the energy required to produce any goods or services, considered as if that energy was incorporated or embodied within the product itself. What that means? Well, 
It means it is the ultimate cost of any good. Uh, and it very well represents how much impact production of this good has on the environment. And it could be your house, your phone, your food. And you can calculate every single, uh, well, you can calculate energy for every single step in the living cycle of this product. And what else? You can optimize it. And you should optimize every step because you can use local materials to produce it without transportation. You can design this product to be more durable or use less resources or be easier to, um, to recycle. Martian uh, societies will know very well how much it costs them to keep on breathing and eating something that we take, that we take for granted. And those technologies that we are proposing to keep this colony sustainable, um, those ideas how this economy could work, and most of all, this self-aware society that knows about its environment could one day help us understand how we should operate on Earth. So one day we can really put this, all this work here on Earth and we could become a lot more responsible with our resources and be a lot more responsible with our natural habitat. Thank you very much. <laughs>